<laughs> hey there. Um, so, today I kind of wanted to just, kind of just share some thoughts I had on this whole, I don't know, contention between heterosexual women and lesbianism, which, you know, is nothing new. It's been going on for a long time. But, or it's, I wouldn't even say between lesbians or and heterosexual women in general, but it's it's really sort of like this, I feel like a lot of it can start to, to get reactionary, which is what has brought me to the point that I'm at right now where I'm like, okay, you know what, I kind of want to talk about it because this is something I've been, I've been, you know, um, trying to have a deeper understanding of and wrapping my head around for, you know, years now. Firstly, I think that most heterosexual women who consider themselves radical feminists are sort of, they're like on their way to radical feminism, actually, because many of them, and, I, and including very prominent radical feminists, they seem to be still going on and on about like masculinity and culture. They keep trying to frame patriarchy as, as a cultural problem, as if men did not intentionally design this culture to be the way it is. Um, as if we just sort of accidentally stumbled upon, like, some really woman-hating, woman-using, you know, culture, be just because, you know, like, it's just sort of incidental. Um, they're not understanding men as being biologically actually very different than women, um, that the, they're not understanding the parasitic nature, that male biology actually positions them to be in, um, inherently. So without this understanding, I feel a lot of these radical women or radical feminists um, are kind of just floating around out there just thinking that we can still fix the problem. <laughs> um, and so therefore they never really come to the true understanding that Female liberation is about getting away from the parasites. Therefore, all women um, would benefit tremendously and liberation would require women to cut ties with men. Liberation would require women to cut ties with men. Female liberation cannot happen so long as we are entangled with men in whatever ways. Period. That is an understanding, whether you consider that... <clears throat> you know, a lesbian understanding or not is really a matter of semantics. I don't think anyone has to be a lesbian or has to be romantic sexual way of relating to other women in order to understand this, this idea. Um, that ultimately, if we really want to be free, people, women, we have to get away from men because men will inherently tie us down, block us, intercept us, violate us, trick us, confuse us, because they are, as I said, parasites. You look at parasites, different species that have parasitic relationships to other species, and they come up with, I mean, uh, an endless amount of tactics in order to successfully use the host species um, and trap the host species, and confuse the host species, and dominate or aggressively, you know, um, physically, um, injure the host species, you know, I mean, there's, there's so many different tactics, just, you can look, when you look at, like, other species of parasites, and by comparison, you can see this in, men. There's all different types of men out there, right? They're all, they're all different, but I mean, they're actually all the same. They might all have different parasitic strategies, but they're all parasitic strategies. Um, <clears throat> so this is an understanding that most supposedly radical feminists, and again, that's kind of getting into semantics I don't really care about. I don't want to sit here and say they're not really radical feminists or they're not true radical feminists or whatever. Um, I, I, you know, again, semantics. My point is, is that they don't have this understanding. 
They don't have this understanding of the parasitic innateness, the innately parasitic relationships that males will always have with females in the human species. Um, now, there are maybe future videos where I can talk about sort of like hypothetically ways in which women may be able to engage with with the parasites um, that, you know, but it, it, it that's, again, a lot of sort of like th theory, very hypothetical, very theoretical uh, type stuff maybe I will talk about in the future, but in all practicality, it is absolutely a fact that women's liberation 100% depends on us getting away from our oppressors who are really just parasites. Um, I have a blog now. I'd like to pause for a moment to um, talk about that. I have a couple different posts um, up right now. I'm working on a few more. and I'll continue to write more about the parasitic, having a, you know, coming into my own new, par you know, understanding of this parasitic dynamic. Um, and yeah, so, but the reason I talk about this in regards to this whole controversy with, like, lesbianism ideology versus, like, het women, you know, being like, you can't shame me because I love a man, you know, or whatever. It's all oh, this just this reactionary ridiculousness. Um, like, firstly... I don't necessarily agree with lesbianism ideology, like I said. I don't think women have to be sexually or romantically um, connected to each other in order to be meaningfully connected to each other, in order to love each other and care about each other as a family and as a community. Um, I think that's really more important. I think that platonic love is really the most important. And, and some people extend the word lesbianism to include just that. Um, but again, that's, that's playing semantic games, and I really don't give a shit about that. Um, I, I don't like when people start redefining words. It starts to make conversations very difficult. Um, I, mean, I shouldn't say I don't like it, but just we have to be careful about expanding the meanings of words and you know because that's exactly what is happening with like liberalism <laughs> liberal you know liberalism is just we're, we're like well we're just redefining the words and that will solve the problem like if we just stop calling it this word well then <laughs> that will make the problem go away or something like I think that's sort of like this weird subconscious reasoning underneath it but so anyway, um, basically, you know, whenever I see heterosexual women get reactionary like this, you know, it gets, it, it annoys me. But I do understand that ultimately being tied to a male in my life is me being tied to a parasite. But so many things in my life have been socially and emotionally deprived, injured, trauma um, especially in the realm of, for me, but between I and the women in my life, particularly my mother, that, you know, even just having basic platonic levels of trust with, with other women is incredibly challenging for me. And this is just, I'm talking about just this personally, like I understand this. What I'm saying is that like, there's this personal understanding I have about my situation that doesn't change my broader understanding that it's necessary for women to get away from men in order for us to be liberated, period. Lesbianism may or may not actually be required for that, you know, so whatever lesbians are saying, I get it. There's things that lesbians say, you know, that I feel like are not in the place of valuing, first, firstly valuing platonic love and connection and trust, which I feel like that's really what's necessary. I don't feel like the romantic sexual stuff, that's just like a, maybe a bonus for some women if it happens to happen for you. Um, but I, it's not in any way required, um, for women to, to bond with each other, for us to build community, for us to, to provide each other with the 
really the emotional support that that we actually need in order to not need men in our lives really because I feel like for het women and I I don't speak for het women I whatever but um I know for me personally it's I'm very emotionally dependent on my husband he's my best friend you know um I don't have even you know established platonic trust with any other woman you know I've over the years been sort of working to try and heal up you know this very damaged relationship I have with my mother which sort of set the stage for me not being able to really connect with women for pretty much my whole life um and it's something I do still wrestle with and um I feel like you know basically what I'm trying to get at here is to to have a broader ideological understanding of something does not suddenly mean that practical reality will bend to that ideological will you know I also know that plastic is terrible for the environment but I still go to the grocery store and buy stuff that's wrapped in plastic why because I'm trapped in a system that makes it very difficult for me to get out of it and and this is true in so many ways I have to go to work and and work you know be be basically have my labor exploited by a man you know because I don't get paid very well like but I have to keep doing this I, I you know because I again I'm trapped in a system that I can't quite get out of even though I really really want to get out of it and then you know also from an emotional social standpoint you know I'm trapped in a system that keeps women separated disconnected hating each other angry at each other resentful of each other manipulative of each other abusive of each other you know um some of us even have to deal with very very early childhood traumas with our own mothers you know so which <laughs> like i said so practical reality is not going to suddenly change just because i have an ideological understanding of what's necessary for female liberation you know um you know i still drive my car because i fucking have to <laughs> like i know it's bad for the environment i know driving cars is completely unnatural you know but i still fucking do it every day because i have to you know i very much desperately want to have other options and i'm seeking to create or find other options for myself to get out of the system in various ways and the system is a parasitic system it's a male designed system that's made by men for men it works for men in so many ways it works obviously against women in so many ways and like i want out like i fucking want out i've wanted out for most of my life even before i realized it what it, what that feeling was i've had that feeling though i just want fucking out but i am trapped and I'm fighting every day to try and find ways to get out of this shit, okay? But it's not something that you can just change. And so um, from the social-emotional aspect, a lot of people like to make this argument that, like, well, now that you just, like, you have information, therefore now you can change something. And that's not, <clears throat> that's not always true. Simple you know, intellectual understanding does not change the deeper emotional structures that have been made, okay? That's a lot harder to change, especially when reality doesn't present you with, with any viable options or alternatives. <clears throat> I very much would love to have a female community that I feel safe and connected and loved by. You know, it's what I want more than anything in the world. But every goddamn day reality presents me with not that, the opposite of that. And I have yet to actually experience that in the way that that makes sense to me or that feels loving and honest to me, you know. So, 
I don't I don't agree with the, the het women who are completely rejecting lesbian ideology altogether, you know, just because they're all like, I like sex with men, and so, you know, you can't shame me for that or some stupid shit. Like, no, that's dumb. Just because your personal situations, you know, and you don't, maybe they don't want to examine it, you know, I'm constantly examining this stuff, but like I said, I ultimately come up against this wall where I'm, like, trapped, and I don't actually have other alternatives, um, and I'm not going to emotionally starve myself, you know, um, I'm not going to financially starve myself, that's not going to do me any good, that's not going to put me in a position where I'm going to have the energy and resources to propel myself out of this shit once I have an alternative, you know, it's not, it doesn't make sense for me to do that. But I do ideologically understand that, and I don't reject the ideology just because it doesn't fit with my practical circumstances. So that's the gray area, at least, that I wanted to share and talk about, that I feel like, again, all this polarization, reactionary bullshit, um, it's just, it's, it's manufactured, and it's probably, it's probably dudes. Like, it's probably dudes who are, like, instigating this bullshit, honestly. Like, I always think that. I'm like, anytime there's, like, women, you know, <laughs> dividing themselves and, like, pushing each other into corners, you know, um, trying to stand as far away from each other as possible or, like, going to extremes and being reactionary to each other, it's, like, it's basically because men do that to us. Men are either initiating or instigating that exact... Um, at, at that exact point in some way, you know, sort of like s covertly innervating, right? And or it is also just the overall patterns of communication and relations that have been um, destroyed and mangled and contorted between women that men have done all of this, like in our, you know, right, in, in the culture, hate. The culture of males has done this to women, you know, over generations and generations. These are the patterns that we know, and we don't know the good patterns. We don't know the good patterns. I, every day I imagine what it might feel like to have grown up in a community of women who actually don't fucking hate each other, that who are actually bonded together and feel, you know, a strong love and connection and support with each other and that men are on the periphery I, every day I try to imagine what that might have felt like to even to even experience that for like a minute you know or maybe even my whole life would have been, would just be I don't even know that's like a dream that's like a long lost land that doesn't exist anymore you know I hope it's not but reality tells me it doesn't fucking exist around me it's not anywhere within miles for me you know so um, that, that's again, that's the practical reality we're dealing with, but, but I'm still not going to reject my basic understanding of, of where these lesbians are coming from and why, you know, again, I don't necessarily think that lesbianism in regards to like sexual romantic connections between women is, is necessary at all for women to prioritize each other, support each other love each other, you know, stay connected, um, and for women to have this understanding ultimately that males aren't a cultural problem, they're a biological problem for women. What's wrong with them is biological, it's not just some cultural incident. Men made the system the way it is because they like it that way, because they're parasites. I'll have a post on my blog coming out, um, you know, at some point. <laughs> I'm very sporadic. I've kind of come to just accept this about myself. I, you know, I, I'm just not a consistent person because I kind of like to chase 20 rabbits at the same time. You know, I have a lot of different things I, I like to do and I'm interested in. Um, so I, I, being consistent about any one thing is just sort of, you know, I've just come to accept that's just not something I'm really... I'm very good at so but but um you know I will be sporadically writing on my blog and I will be sporadically making posts here on my on my YouTube channel um posting videos and you know my thoughts discussions on things so 
Anyway, um, you are all definitely more than welcome to share your thoughts on this topic. I know it's, um, there's a lot of different, um, branching off on thoughts for this type of stuff. I mean, you know, I get it. There's definitely aspects of, of lesbian ideology that don't sit right with me either. You know, I think that lesbians, you know, still maintaining that coupling format, that romantic coupling format, is really still just copying the parasitic relationships that are het relationships, right? Like, men have created a system that couples women up with men to separate us all out, so that each man gets paired with his own host, each parasite gets its own host. That's what het relationships are, that's what marriage is, that's what coupling is, it's based on this parasitic host relationship. So women, you know, ultimately taking that and then just instead making about two women, you know, if if you genuinely have that connection, sure, but I, I feel like getting hung up on this, ro- like romance is a parasitic tactic, like ultimately, <laughs> you know, and I think that the way that women would love and connect with each other would be different and would look and feel different from that. But I know there are lesbians out there who very much take on this this, um, this heterosexual model for the way that they relate to other women. And that's not healthy. And that's not, that's not what I want. You know, I don't want that. Um, I've dated women who, you know, are homosexual women and might consider, might be said that they're lesbians, you know, however you're using the word lesbian, I don't know, but they're homosexual women, but they hate women. They're homosexual women, but they, relate to women through that dominator model still, you know, and they want to control other women emotionally, psychologically, you know what I mean? Um, And so when I start to hear lesbians talking in a certain way, speaking in a certain rhetoric about how all women should be lesbians or whatever, it starts to me that it starts to look like, and I speculate that it is, actually those women taking on that sort of dominator um, model in the, in the heterosexual relationship. Um, and then just because they're female stepping into that dominator role model, they think that that's somehow groundbreaking, but it's not, you know, you're just being the dominant masculine, um, role, but it's still a hierarchical model and not natural to how women would or should love, should actually love each other. Um, so, you know, I'm very wary of it, but I do, again, understand that ultimately women connecting with each other, trusting each other, and deeply loving each other, even just in a platonic way, which I think is the most important, is having that basic platonic love. That's sort of like the foundation, right? Like, you need that. Romantic and sexual love is like, well, that's secondary it may reinforce it or not, it, you know, but it's not necessary. Platonic, basic platonic love and trust is, that is the foundation for our liberation and the foundation that will actually give us a viable, practical alternative to being emotionally connected with men.